Once upon a time, there was a king. He was the ruler of the merfolk kingdom of Ophish. King Lion Ophish had three children, two daughters and a son. Their mother was tragically killed in a fishing accident, so he was left to raise them on his own. His royal highness was a fair but strict ruler. He had an old school way of thinking about raising his children. They were to stay under the sea to learn the rule of the reef so they can take over when the king dies. They were to eat, sleep, and breathe the royal life. In every family, there is a rebel. In the Ophish clan, it is Philae, the eldest daughter. She loved her family and her home. She took her duty seriously and did all she was asked to, but she wanted more. Not only did she want to be where the people are, but she wanted to go to a big university with them. The king objected every time she would try to talk to him about it, which she did every year on her birthday since she was 16 years old. She felt rejected, unheard, and invalidated every single time. Her 21st birthday was coming soon, in just a matter of a week. She plotted and planned out her escape carefully, writing it in code in a journal she kept in a satchel made for traveling. One night, as she was going through her bag to get her journal, she felt a little suede drawstring bag. She knew she didn't put it in there, so I pulled it out and studied it. The bag was teal with a brown cord woven through the grommets near the top of the bag to cinch it and tie it closed. Filet opened the bag. In it were many coins and a necklace with a little blue scallop shell and a little kelp fiber paper scroll that was tied with a little teal ribbon. She opened the scroll and looked it over. Her eyes welled up with tears. When she sees that it is a letter from her late mother, she read it softly to herself, and it said, My dearest Clay, if you are reading this, you started to prepare for your escape from the kingdom, and up to the surface where people walk and run. You want to stay all day in the sun, and I knew this from the moment you were born. I knew you were going to yearn for another life follow your passion of art and to learn all you can. I yearned like this one, and I followed my dreams before I met your father. And you were like me when I was younger. So I just knew this is where your journey was going to take you. After I married your father, and had a family that me to escape the sea, called once again. Seeing me in you, it was apparent that I had to prepare a way for you. I took a brief trip to the surface to a place called Oasis Spring. While I was there, I bought some land, and put on it a cottage, with an underground pond to stretch your fins without alarming the town. I also put money in a bank account for you to use as you saw fit. I hope you to use some of it to go to university, that you have always wanted to do. There is a deed in your name, and the key to the cottage in a safety deposit box at the bank. Ask for the manager, tell him your name, so know to do. In this bag you'll also find gold coins called simoleons. It's the form of money humans use on the surface. There is also a necklace in there. It is enchanted with the following incantation. So you'll turn your tail into legs and your scales to skin. It's like the incantation when you're near the shore. To live a life out of the sea is where my soul wishes to be. With my legs I shall be free, so take my tail away from me. You make it to shore and find your land legs. Take the paved path from the beach through the village to the bus depot. There's a token in my bag for the bus for Oasis Spring. It's a long drive to rest up. When you get to Oasis Spring, go to the bank and get the things I left you, including a map to the cottage. Good luck, my lovely girl. Have a beautiful life. The father will come around. The day of her 21st birthday arrived. She went to her party. Surrounded by friends and family, she had cake, ice cream, opened her presents, and spent time with everyone as she thanked them for coming. Afterwards, she took a nap until late into the night. When she awoke, she grabbed her bag and carefully swam out of her room from her bedroom window. She swam past the guards who were snoring loudly. They didn't even stir when she went past. Once she left the walls of the kingdom, she flicked her tail as hard and as fast as she could toward the shore. 
when she saw the beach before her she followed her mother's instructions with the necklace and let the bubbles swirl around her until they completely enveloped her body while startling it didn't hurt fillet he merely tickled the bubbles ceased their dance she looked down and saw two legs where her tail used to be fillet swam to the beach and took a little time to get her land legs before she followed the rest of her mother's instructions she slept soundly on the bus completely exhausted from the night's journey from her kingdom in the ocean when she awoke it was afternoon and she was in the desert it was hot and very sunny she left the bus and asked a worker how to get to the bank she reached into her bag grabbed a protein kelp bar as she was famished and headed in the direction of the bank the national bank of oasis springs was not far from the bus depot she finished her snack walked in and spoke with one of the tellers Belay spoke her name, the teller asked her to wait there while she went to grab the manager. The manager came out of his office and said, You must be Miss Filet of Fish. Your mother told me many years ago that you would be coming to see me some day. I've been waiting. Let's go to the back here, and I'll get your mother's box. Filet didn't speak, but nodded. She was still trying to process all that has happened in the last 24 hours. When the manager returned, he placed the box down gave Filet a key and told her to put it in one of the locks and turn it while he did the same. There was a soft click. I'll leave you here to sort through the box. Take your time. Let me know when you're done, said the bank manager. Okay, um, thank you for your help, sir, Filet replied. She lifted the lid and saw all the things her mother told her about. The cottage deed, key, a map, and more money. She closed the lid and pushed the button on the table to request the manager to return, which he did, and said, I trust you found everything you needed in the box? You'll take the stuff with you, yes? Yes, thanks again. You've been most kind, said Filet. Oh, you're quite welcome. Come back and see us soon so we can help you keep your simoleons safe, said the bank manager. Filet nodded, waved, and smiled as she left the bank. She opened the map right away and tried to read it through squinting eyes. It was so bright. She followed the directions and navigated through the city into the suburbs, to the outskirts, and to the little dirt road that led into a secluded lot with a cottage, just as her mother described. Weeks go by, and summer turns into fall. She had been working at a local museum, the future's past, as an assistant to the head curator in the fine arts section. She was surrounded by masterworks from renowned artists that she had studied on her own time. She was just as fascinated now as she was when she discovered the hobby turned passion. As she worked her way up the ladder, her boss suggested she go to university. With her knowledge and first-hand experience at the museum and from the paintings she had been doing on the side, she would be a shoe-in for the Distinguished Fine Arts degree from Brightchester University. Her boss helped her with filing for scholarship grants, and filling out her Brightchester application. It only took two weeks, but it seemed like years, for the results of her hard work to come in the mail. She had been accepted to Brightchester for the Distinguished Fine Arts major. The granted scholarships would be paying her full 12 credit tuition. For the first two semesters, she lived in the off-campus apartments for Brightchester students. It was just her and three other girls, she struggled to find her stride at university, and by the end of her first six credits, she was already on academic probation. She decided then to move to the on-campus dorm so she could focus on school entirely without distraction. The move helped, and she finished her schooling with a B-plus GPA from Brightchester and her master's degree in fine art. Filet moved back to the cottage and worked her tail off back at the museum but this time as full-time head curator of the Masterworks collection. She was still painting and selling her work on the side for a while to save up money to build her dream home. The cottage was old and showing its age. It was time for an upgrade. Filet found work as a teaching assistant in the Arts and Literature Department at Brightchester. She left her job at the museum to work full-time at the university. The opportunities there were many and the pay was great. She finally saved enough simoleons to contract Katalee Creates Construction Company to build the home she has dreamed about for years. 
They negotiated a deal and broke ground soon after. Her new home was being built where the cabin used to be. So she lived in a faculty apartment at Brightchester while construction was happening. Her new home was everything she could have ever wanted and more. It was a tiny home, but it seemed so big. It was made with an artist in mind, in a Santa Fe style with a separate artist's studio. And the last minute changes to accommodate her growing Bengal kitten, Sammy, who had become the love of her life. During her stint on campus as faculty, she met someone. She never thought she'd fall so hard for a man, a human man, but she did. Kenjo Yamaguchi stole her heart. They had dated for a few months when one night at dinner at the Shea Lama, she asked him to move in with her and Sammy. And six months after that, Kenjo proposed and she said yes. They planned the most amazing, extraordinary, and weird wedding. Weird? How could a wedding be weird? Well, have you ever been to a wedding that was officiated by an all-knowing, all-seeing toilet? It would be the toilet wedding to end all toilet weddings. She wrote her father several times since she'd left the sea. She wanted to tell him everything, hoping that he would be proud of her. He never responded. She refused to let that douse her sunshine. Instead, she would marry the man of her dreams and live a life out of the sea, as she wished it could be part of their world. As she wished it could be part of their world. Come back next week for the wedding of the century. Buy a toilet. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Please make sure you check the description box for information for Kaylee Creates and myself. Be well, happy, and peaceful, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.